Hi everybody, welcome to Lady Melbourne TV. Thank you for tuning in for another week. I was so overwhelmed with your responses to last week's video. Um, thank you for your comments and your emails. I'm really, really glad that you liked the video blog and so I hope to make this a regular thing every Friday for you. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about um, something that I get quite asked quite often, um, which is how do I grow my blog to get more and more exposure and how can I create a successful blog? Um, I guess I need to start off by saying that I'm going into my fourth year of blogging. Um, this has been a long-term thing and a long-term goal to realize for me. It's not something that's happened overnight. And I think any you know, blogger that's been doing this for a while will probably tell you that as well. It's very, very rare that... Um, you know, for the, there's something like 12 million blogs in the world, according to Technorati. So out of all of those, you know, you can pluck a couple that become overnight successes, but mainly it's just a lot of hard work. Um, so, you know, I think I need to start off by saying that just so that you know that this isn't something that's sort of just sprung up magically overnight for me. Um, I think that one of the really, really important aspects of having a, a good quality blog is having good quality content. Um, and any successful blogger will, will sort of tell you that. I was lucky enough to meet Scott Schumann from The Satorialist um, last year and interview him. And I asked him, um, you know, how do you con continually come up with the, you know, the ideas and keep things fresh and, and the content on your blog and he said it's all about um, original content so going out and finding you know sourcing his own material and taking all of the photos himself I think when you look at blogs that are really successful it's because they have a unique point of difference and they've got really good quality content anybody can source photos and talk about their day and how they're having trouble at work but if you really want it to grow and you want to attract an audience and keep people interested um, you've got to offer something that they're going to want to read every day I guess it's it's sort of like common sense for blogging isn't it um, the other thing I think that's worth mentioning is that um, really, really long prose can sometimes be hard to read online. So I think kind of learning how to um, communicate online rather than writing maybe 500 words in a block of text, breaking it down into shorter paragraphs that are easier to read, it's a much more effective way to engage with your audience. Um, I found that um, for me, particularly in fashion, um, my imagery is really, really important. And the commentary is something that some people want to read and some people don't. But when I do write, I try to keep it to a roughly 200 words, um, no more than that, so that it doesn't take away from what I'm really trying to come across with my blog. I think you really need to be clear as well about what you're doing. Um, a lot of people that don't know about blogging think it's uh, like an online diary. You know, if I meet people and they say, what do you do? And I say, oh, I'm a blogger. And they're like, isn't that like MySpace or something? Like, do you just write about your day? <laughs> and I think that, you know, um, being really clear about what you want to do will really help your audience understand as well. There's nothing worse than going to a blog and you think, what is this actually about? You know, I think we've all had that. Which brings me around to my next point and my final point, which I think is most important, and that is to be consistent and persistent with what you're doing. There's really nothing worse than going to a blog and you you know, you you might not have clicked on it for a while and you think, Oh, I'm gonna go and check so and so out and you do, and they haven't updated for weeks. Um, you will find that that is the quickest way to lose an audience. I know myself as a, you know, an internet user and somebody that reads blogs all the time. If I um, am looking forward to visiting somebody and I click on um, and found it hasn't been updated, I will just as soon click off, and you've lost that reader. Um, so being consistent for me it's every day I give myself the weekends off but my readers know that they can come every day and they're going to, going to have you know fresh content um, a lot of people work full-time and blogging is a, you know something they do on the side so I would say if that's the case for you it's really important in your profile or somewhere really prominent on the blog up the top to point out to your readers that you'll be updating twice a week once a week um, I think if 
unless you have a really niche blog if you're going to you really need to look at why you're blogging if you can't update more than once a week you know um, but if that is the case you've got to let your readers know because um, I learned this really valuable lesson early on when another blogger said to me people invest their time in you when they come and read your pages and I'd never thought of it like that I'd never you know blog blogging can be very insular often we do it from our desks from our homes our lounge rooms some people do it in their bed um, and uh, you know you forget that there's a lot of people out there that are they're putting aside their time to come and read what you're doing uh, and I think if you you know pull all of the tips that I've said today good quality writing shorter pro prose original content, really good quality photos and a consistency, you'll find that um, it's a really, really good way to learn what your audience wants and sort of keep them in involved and engaged in what you're doing. Um, I guess the only other thing to consider also is how involved you are in the blogosphere. I think um, a lot of successful bloggers will tell you that they comment on other blogs, they read other blogs, and they're really involved with social media. So it might be a real no-brainer for some of you out there, but I really have to mention that Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, um, and if you're into fashion, um, any fashion networking sites like Lookbook, Shiktopia and things like that are just crucial to getting people exposed to what you're doing. And it may be in the beginning, it's just your friends um, reading it, which was the case for me. It was myself and Mother Melbourne. And uh, I'd log into Google Analytics every day and think, oh my goodness, five people have read it. If it's not me and mum, there's three other people out there in the world that have read my blog. Um, it's true. I started off just like everybody else. Um, but I learned very quickly that if I wanted people to come and read my blog, I needed to be involved um, in what was going on out there. It's really, really important. I really hope that this has just given you a bit of an insight into how you know, I, I work and think as a blogger, it's really individual um, and it's different for everybody that you talk to. Um, that's what is wonderful about blogging and that's why I love it because it's a platform that enables you to have your own voice and, and publish it and hopefully engage others to, you know, create a dialogue with you. Um, and I hope that you can take something from, you know, what I've told you today. It's my very humble experience. Um, and I am always grateful that you guys tune in and uh, you want to hear what I've got to say. Again, like I said last week, if you have any questions or comments, please email me. I'm more than happy to chat on each Friday to you. Um, I am Phoebe. This is Lady Morgan. Thank you for watching and I will see you next week. Bye. <laughs>